today I thought maybe I should do a vlog as an ode to my grandmother. She was born and raised in Kalihi. Um, she told me that she grew up on Kukui Street in these old plantation homes. They bulldozed it and now it's known as Mayor Wright's Housing. She's a woman of Chinese Hawaiian German descent and went to Farrington High School. She continued to live in Kalihi throughout her years. Um, even though we didn't really get along, I would say that she taught me a lot, or we actually have similarities, and the reason is um, I'm a rebel, I was a rebellious child, still am, and my grandma is a very conservative woman. So we kind of butt heads, but now that I think about it, we have similarities. She loved to cook, and I would say she was a great cook, and she helped me prep, which got me into cooking. Um, she loved to travel around the world, which I also love to do, so I guess it's in the blood. Um, and she also took me out to these places that I'm going to show you that kind of slowly got me into eating out and trying different things. Um, one of the places, well actually two places, in my first Kalihi episode, she used to take me to which one was Campbell for oxtail soup. She would take out if she was tired to, too tired to cook, we would eat that at home with rice. And the Shimazu store, she would always take me for treats. Back then it was not the Shimazu store, it was called the BNS store. It's, it was owned by an elderly uh, couple. And um, the funny thing is she used to park her big ass Buick on the front on School Street of that store and it's still like that today. There's no parking there, you can't park there. She'd leave me in the car and she'd say watch out for the cops so they wouldn't ticket her. So I just have to ch chuckle because if you do know me, you know why. So she'd run in, get the shave ice, and we'd eat it in the car um, as I watched for the cops. So um, I'm going to show you these three places that come to mind that she used to take me to often. Um, they're old school, they're not fancy, they're just simple homestyle cooking, comfort food for people in Hawaii. They've stood the test of time. A lot of these places have been open for lo a long time, 50 plus years. Um, one, I think, is open 70 plus years, and it just shows that they make a good product. If you know, it's really hard to keep a business in Hawaii, especially in the restaurant business, so these places show that they make a good product. So if you're not from Hawaii, give these places a try. Um, they're all great comfort foods for people in Hawaii, especially um, in the Kalihi area. And um, just support these businesses so they can keep going. It's very hard to keep it running so you don't want to lose the nostalgia of the great tasting food that I'm going to show. So come along with me, I'll show you the places that we used to go to. This is Palace Simon located in Kalihi off of 1256 North King Street. It has a very small parking lot with minimal spaces. It was opened in 1946, originally off of Baratania Street next to the Palace Theatre, which gives it its name, and then they moved to Kalihi. It's open Tuesdays through Saturdays, 11am to 11pm. So I got the small wonton men, and you always have to have the hot mustard and shoyu to dip your simon and wonton in it. The palace I'm in, it's very simple. It's got just chopped char siu, which is a sweet Chinese barbecue meat, and green onions, and a simple dashi broth, which is pretty much made from almost like a shrimp stock, and nice chewy noodles. You always have to have a barbecue stick with your simon, and there's condiments on the side, such as Tabasco if you need. But I like Palace Simon because it's simple, but such an amazing taste for something so simple. It's no frills, it's got chewy noodles, if you want it cooked a little bit more, you can always ask them to do it. The wontons are handmade every day, and the barbecue beef sticks have a nice char to them, with a nice teriyaki type sauce. Very, very unique and very meaty barbecue stick compared to other people. And you always have to have a diamond head strawberry soda with your Simon. So I finished eating at Palace Simon and it was so good I finished everything. Um, I am sweating right now. It is so hot but it's so delicious even though it's such a hot humid day. Definitely come down here for some old school eats. 
um, cash only, unfortunately, and definitely get the Diamond Head Soda. It's almost like a strawberry harito, but a bit sweeter. So you should come here early though. All the stalls now are taken. I was lucky to get a stall. I came right at opening and there was already people sitting down. So either come a little later at night in the middle of the day after lunch or right when it opens. Next, we're gonna head to a place called Jane's Fountain. It's in the Liliha area, not so much Kalihi, right on the border. And it is another old school place to eat. The sign is rusty, but the place is still standing for some great local eats. So I'm here at Jane's Fountain today to try some old nostalgic food. This place is a time warp. It's been here forever. The sign is rusty, but they're still going strong, making some great food. And today I felt like fried noodles, but they're famous for their cheeseburger deluxe and other items and breakfast. And, um, but I don't know, I felt like fried noodles and a ice cream float. So it's super old school. They do ice cream floats and they still have some machinery that's from the 60s to the 50s in an old jukebox, so it's pretty cool. This is the menu for Jane's Fountain posted on the wall. It's got all the local favorites, and it's pretty extensive, so no matter what, you can find something you want to eat. And walking into here is quite a time warp. There's a jukebox that still plays LPs, not sure if it works anymore, and this old school cash register. Some pickled cabbage and mac salad comes with your meal. Pickled cabbage is really good. Right amount of vinegar. And my fried noodles came out and it's pretty simple. It's got a lot of onions, green onions, um, some spam and a little bit of char siu. Even though the fried noodles have very simple ingredients, the fried noodles at Jane's Fountain were very, very delicious. I highly recommend it real good flavor and the lady who runs the shop is very sweet and she also cooks she's a great cook mac salad was also delicious i don't even like mac salad but that was good and you can't leave here without trying a root beer float it was delicious look at that people fighting for parking to eat at jane's fountain so the cops came This used to be Young's Fish Market. So that was Jane's Fountain, super old school. I love all the old school items that are still in the restaurant, such as that cash register, the jukebox, and the Coke machine. Um, it's not, if you're not from Hawaii, it's not like the most, I don't know what the word is, fancy food. It's just old school home cooked food that your grandma would make, which is why I picked it. But she also took me there. So if you're ever in the Liliha area, parking is hard to find here. It's probably maybe five street stalls in front and you can reverse and turn around and go the other way. And there's some parking stalls there, too, but you might have to walk a ways. But if you're lucky, just come early, have some breakfast here. Um, and just, uh, you might be able to find some parking more than like during the lunch hour. <laughs> Definitely try their um, ice cream floats. It takes you back, it's nostalgic. Um, their cheeseburger deluxe is good as well, as well as their breakfast items. They also have some old school items like liver and onions, which is like what your grandma would eat and pork and squash, which is an old school Hawaii food. Um, so just come check it out, support them. They they're. A family business just trying to survive and they've made it past decades of uh, inflation and economy ups and downs so um, they s totally stood the test of time so come to Jane's Fountain eat the old-school Hawaii food and if you're not from Hawaii try it out and you can try all the different old-school foods that we as kids grew up eating Right next to Jane's Fountain is a place called, well, used to be a place called Young's Fish Market. Um, they were there for ages and it was a little, little shop. And now, as you can see, it's a little mobile 
computer phone thing repair shop, which is so sad. It used to be a sandal store prior to that and some other things that didn't last too long. But I remember my grandma always driving there as well as my mom taking me and we would buy a whole bag of Lalo's. And um, my favorite as a child would be the Haupia. It's quite different from everyone else's Haupia. It's very gelatinous or more, I guess, uh, harder, not as creamy, but for some reason I loved it and I still love it to this day. Um, we would buy it in trays, in those big plastic trays. Um, I do believe they still sell it that way. And they have the smaller sizes of the trays as well. They moved to a couple of places. Um, after Liliha Street, they moved next to the laundromat of Kapalama Shopping Center, which is now, I believe, Ahi and Vegetable. And from there, they moved across the street to the old Gems, which is City Square now. So that's where they are now, and we're gonna go take a look at their food and reminisce on the foods that I loved as a kid. So this is the shopping center that Young's Fish Market is located in right now. It used to be the old gems if you're that old school. And uh, it is quite crowded during lunchtime, so you might want to come earlier in the day if you want to get some food from Young's, otherwise it is packed. Or you could park on the street right here, there's tons of metered stalls. Young's Fish Market is located at 1286 Kalani Street in the City Square Shopping Center. And they have different types of poke, haupia, kalua pig, lao lao, poise, and roasted meat such as roast pork and char siu. So this is the mini number one, which is a mini lao lao plate with lomi lomi salmon and koi. You can also get rice and you can ch pick um, chicken, pork, or butterfish if you want uh, different fillings in your lao lao. I went with a traditional pork and we'll give it a taste. And of course you need some chili pepper water with your Hawaiian food. That's on the side for you to get. If you don't like spicy, you don't need to eat it. Mm. Really, really nice. Nice and hot, still fresh. They just obviously made it. I went at opening. This is the luau leaves, a lot of it and a lot of pork in there. Not, of course, there's a good fat to meat ratio. And if you're not from Hawaii, some people don't like poi, but um, it's best if you mix it. It's like a starch, like rice, so you eat your meat or your other main with it. Super yummy. The taste with Young's Fish Market definitely has not changed. I did see a sign if you are a senior, I believe 65 years or over, they have Senior Tuesdays. So you get a discount off their food. Lomi Lomi Salmon, if you don't know, is chopped up tomatoes, green onions, regular onions, and pieces of salmon. And it marinates for a while to give it a good taste. So if you don't like fishy things, it can be fishy, but it, I think it has a great taste and complements the poi and the other Hawaiian foods. And this right here is like when you were a little kid, it was like finding the treasure. It's a piece of butterfish that always goes in the lao lao, so definitely traditional. Some other places do not put butterfish in their lao lao, but it's one small little piece hidden in there. Um, butterfish is also known, I guess, to other people as black cod gives the lalo a really good taste. My favorite part of it. And sorry guys, I had to move because that park had like tons of flies and it was getting really gross and annoying. So uh, besides the food 
you can also buy other Hawaiian food and snacks. So you can't go to Young's without buying some boiled peanuts. And um, most people think boiled peanuts are a southern thing, but it's long been a Hawaiian thing as well. And I think the origin for this came from the Chinese because it's uh, the Hawaiian version of a boiled peanut is it's boiled in obviously a pot of water with a lot of Hawaiian salt, which to other people looks like kosher salt. It's like a very hard, um, big rock salt. And it's also got, if you do it the right way anyway, um, other people do it different ways, but I don't believe the flavor is very authentic. You need a five star anise, which is a Chinese spice. And sometimes they put garlic in it. Um, but just really simple like that. It's really, really good. And then um, you also have to have a skill on knowing how to boil them. You don't boil them too long because you don't want them soggy. I, I absolutely do not like soggy ones. So this is what it looks like. It's still got a little bit of crunch, but it's still cooked, so not totally raw. Just have to have that perfect peanut. And yep, yeah, these are good. A little bit more on the overcooked side, but the flavor's there. You definitely taste the um, star anise, so that's what it looks like. Hopefully it focuses, and you just peel them, and people in Hawaii eat them as a snack, and it's healthy and really good. So you can find these at most mom and pop markets, little stores, or other Hawaiian food places such as... Um, Alicia's, Fort Ruger Market, all those old school stores sell them. So um, definitely try that if you haven't. And like I talked about, this was my favorite thing as a kid when my grandma or mom took me to Young's was their haupia. And this is haupia. It comes in a tray like this from Young's anyway. Most places only give you a little slice with their plate lunch, but... I decided to buy the whole small tree and as I mentioned before Young's fish market help is a little different as well other places it's very creamy and you just um, cut into it almost falling apart then this one is more gelatinous um, and a little harder not in a bad way just um, compared to other places mm-hmm and just like I remember got a nice nice coconut flavor I don't know maybe it's kind of artificial but I like it I grew up with it compared to other halpias anyway but definitely good I could eat like the bigger pan that they sell all to myself so if you're wanting to try Hawaiian food again and you're not from Hawaii definitely have some halpia it's a nice coconut sweet dessert pudding and I think Young's Fish Market makes one of the best ones, and it's a little bit more unique than other people's help you. So, hope you liked my vlog of all the places my grandma used to take me. Eating all these foods over the past days brought back a lot of nostalgia. Um, and I hope these places stick around for a, a little bit longer. It's really hard. Uh, to see stuff when you were a kid still be in business today. A lot of these places have long gone, but these are three places that have stood the test of time. They're still here. So while you're here and while they're there, you try it out, give them your business. Um, I'm sure they would appreciate it. And of course they make great food. So until next time, we'll see you on the next food vlog. If you like the content, please like, and subscribe to my channel and also join us on Facebook I have a Facebook page under the same name food feed or uh, add me to your Instagram also on Instagram as food 808 so peace out see you next time on the next food vlog